Hi, and welcome to this short video on interactive multimedia. Interactive multimedia, maybe as its uh, title suggests, is a mixture of media. Uh, that could be text, graphics, audio, video, animation. Uh, you can imagine it. Of, you can imagine it like a video in a way. Like you click on something on the computer. It's a learning object, and it displays a screen to you. But rather than video, that screen may not be moving. It may be just some text, some graphics, but it could include a video embedded, uh, or you click on something and it changes to a video. It can be a mixture of all sorts of things, uh, sort of packaged together as a learning object. It, e it can even include things like quizzes. Um, it's interactive in the sense that it responds to the action of the person viewing it. Now, it can respond in a number of ways. It can respond as far as I was. For starters, it doesn't necessarily play through. It may stop and then you click to get it to proceed to the next screen or to play a video or something like that. Um, or it could uh, allow you choices about what to do next. Uh, and you make those choices and it responds to your action. So it allows you to choose what to do or it, possibly it allows you to click on objects to get in extra information. Those are the types of interactivity that might be involved in it. So why would you use interactive multimedia for learning? It may be more engaging, more interesting. It's not as passive as just sitting and watching a, a linear, a straight through video. Uh, Personalisation, for start, you, you can make choices in it uh, about the pace for starters, uh, but also about what you view, what extra information you get. And it also that it may be able to detect even your level of understanding of material and give you a different route to through the material than somebody else. Okay, accessibility. You can add features for people maybe with specific disabilities. Now, I, I can't say I'm a huge fan of interactive multimedia, and it's basically because I feel you can achieve most of the objectives in a cheaper, simpler way. So I do want to include this slide as well. It is expensive to produce or requires a lot of effort. Generally, you need a, a multimedia designer to sit with a subject matter expert at least and to work their way through the materials to decide what type of interactivity would be involved, what sort of pathways of learning for various learners might be involved there. So that's quite a bit of effort, much more than an individual subject matter expert, say, putting together a set of slides for a particular presentation. So you need to be aware that it will require significant extra effort. There are, then you've got to build it. Once you've designed it, you've got to build it. Now, there are rapid development tools, okay, with PowerPoint integration. So you can work from a subject matter expert's PowerPoint slides or something like that. But there's still significant effort in actual producing the, the materials. And then you have to say, well, where will we store these materials? What sort of formats? They can be a challenge as well. Now, this is one of the things that I think is probably important from a from a learning point of view is you can get overload. You can do it, put too much into it. And there is a temptation, there are all these shiny toys to put as much as possible into it. The non-linearity actually can be a challenge for learners as well because they don't know what to decide about which direction to go, what to click on, what do they need. There may be too many sources of information. Often for learning, it may be better just to say this is what we believe the learner needs and keep it simple for them and just present it to them. So those would be my uh, issues with it. And maybe to sum up those issues, I could put it in terms of this, uh, this diagram here, which shows the Pareto principle uh, um, or the 80-20 rule, as it's often called. And the idea here is that often 20% of your effort will get 80% of the impact. And then you're into 
more difficult challenges, the effort you put in after that will just not have the extra impact that you need. So I would say that you have to think long and hard about interactive multimedia. Is it worth all that extra effort when maybe it can be done through uh, those, most of those outputs can be achieved through simpler methods. So thank you very much for watching.